are Posca markers because they're just so versatile for so many different materials. And today I'm going to demonstrate how to paint with Posca markers on a little hexagonal planter. And the cool thing about this is no matter what type of planter you have, whether it looks like this or something else entirely, the technique that I have will translate to whatever else you want to use it on. So with that said, let's get started. So if you have your sketchbook and your pencil, um, you can sketch out the shape of whatever your planter is. Mine has this hexagonal shape, so I already have that drawn out here. And so first things first, there are four faces on this planter. So we're gonna call them quadrant one, two, three, and four. So for this drawing, what I did is draw a few like lava lamp sort of funky blobs and they cross over the different quadrants, which brings me to two rules that I have for this drawing. One is that the colors change for each quadrant. And the second rule is the same color cannot touch. Now, what I mean by that is this is the same blob, but as the sections change between quadrants, they change colors. And so we're just going to follow the one that I've already made to make it easier. But if you want to change your colors, that's totally fine. Do what makes your heart happy. And so for the first, a uh, little blob, I have it like this sort of shape. I have it divided into three sections. So it'll be three different colors. And then another one that's sort of like this crosses over three different areas, divided into also three sections. have this top one. And one on the far right. So say you have a planter that's not hexagonal shaped. What you can do is you can create sort of imaginary lines. Um, you have four, four segments, five, six, really however many you want. And as long as you follow the rule that the colors don't touch and that, or the same color doesn't touch and that they change with each section, it'll work. So for the sketch, I have color pencils that represent each of the different Posca colors we'll be using today. They're all pretty self-explanatory. The only one that's a little bit different is we're gonna use this dark green to represent the emerald green Posca. Um, the actual pen looks a little bit different than how this will look on the paper, but that's fine. You'll know, you'll know what I'm talking about. So this like base section, we'll do the base colors of each quadrant first. This one on the left, make it yellow. This is just a sketch, so it absolutely does not need to be perfect. You just need to know how your colors will be mapped out so it's not an issue when you're painting on the planter itself. This third quadrant will be pink and the second one's green, if you didn't catch that. And then quadrant four will be blue. See? yellow, green, pink, and blue. Okay, 
So I like to color, organize this by color. So I'm gonna color in all the pink and then all the blue and so on. So this little bit up in the corner will be pink. And this area over here will be pink. Let's see. And then this section right here will also be pink. All right, now for blue, the second little section on this little blob will be blue. And then over here, you see in quadrant one, this is pink, but as it moves into quadrant two, it's going to be blue. It's kind of like if you had four sections and you put different filters on all of them. <laughs> you can think of it like that. It creates, it's the same shape, but the color shifts. All right, I think that's all the blue. And then we'll make this section right here, light green. It's a pretty light color. Hopefully it's picking up in the camera. Um, this section right here will be green. And this one right here will also be green. Now, whenever you're sketching on the actual planter, it's fine if the lines don't quite match up. Like you might have some that don't cross the same sections. You can kind of just make it up as you go along, even if say one color doesn't change, that's fine. You can keep whatever is easiest for you, whatever you think looks best, that's great. And so this is the dark green color pencil, which correlates to this emerald green Posca once again. So we'll fill in all the areas on the sketch that will eventually be emerald green. So for those of you that are just now tuning in, this is what we're creating. And the colors shift as you go in between sections. And so if you don't have a hexagonal planter like this, you can create sort of imaginary lines where the colors can change. The markers that we will be using today are acrylic, uh, water-based actually. They're like acrylic paint pens. And the next one that we have is, let's see, orange. Okay, so we only have a couple of sections left to fill, so it's pretty obvious which ones are going to be orange. Once again, in case your sketch doesn't match up quite to mine, that's fine, and you need to like come up with some other colors to fill in the areas, like here, like my original piece. Well, I guess in my original, I did have emerald green here. So we can do that again, that'll be fine. All right. So your sketch will look something like this towards the end. So for the next part, when I'm painting with Poscas or really any type of, of paint that I'm, I need to sketch first, I like to use a light colored colored pencil just to make sure that there's no graphite showing through at the end. And I find that using a colored pencil is particularly a light colored one, it covers a lot easier. So I'm going to be using an orange colored pencil to sketch with. Um, you could use a yellow. Yellow probably wouldn't show up very well on this with the camera. And for this part, we're just going to be replicating the sketch onto your planter or whatever your sketch looks like onto whatever your planter looks like. All right. So again, with the blobby shapes, 
If anyone has a better word for that, please let me know. Blob seems to be the best, the best description that I can think of. Whatever you call those little like bubbles inside of lava lamps, because that was my inspiration for this design. A multicolored lava lamp. All right, let's see. I might need to draw a little bit darker. There we go. Perfect. Once again, we'll split that into three sections. Now, this is really just about enjoying yourself. Don't worry if it's not perfect. You can get really loose with your drawing, whatever works. All right, and so we'll create this blob next. And it crosses, it looks like one, two, three quadrants. Let's see, shut it there. All right, second section. Third section. And you're good. Okay, so just to repeat one more time. So this crosses into the third quadrant like on here. So these colors will change as they move across the plant pot. All right, let's draw this little blob. Oops. So this one. Now I'm going to clean up these lines when I'm actually painting. This is just to give me an idea of how the colors will map out. So I don't have to make a whole bunch of edits that could have otherwise been avoided. All right, and now last, this top section. Doing this area. There's a lot of contrasting colors. It's a little bit difficult, a little bit difficult to see on my phone camera. So we'll start over here. And just get really loose with it. They're blobs. No one's going to be concerned that your blobs don't look perfect. Oops. There we go. There's section two. And then section three. All right. So we have everything mapped out. Now we can get to the really fun part, which is painting with the Posca pens. So a couple tips with Posca pens. Whenever I haven't used mine for a few hours, I would say definitely the start of each day, I like to give them a good shake for about a minute. And so I've already primed mine. Um, I was using them earlier today. However, if I haven't been using them for 15, 20 minutes, I will still shake them up again. Tap on, for sure. <laughs> I'll shake them up for about 15 seconds. If it's one of the really large Posca pens, um, like the uh, bold tip, I'd probably shake it for about a minute just to be safe because you don't want your paint to be too runny or too thick. So these are what I'm, uh, let's see, PC5M, which is 1.8 to 2.5 millimeter tip. I will be using these to actually fill the color in, but to outline everything, because I want to outline the different colors and then fill them in, I'll be using a thinner tip. This is the PC3M. I'm not sure if that will focus, but it's 0.9 to 1.3 millimeters. 
And the difference on there is whether or not you're using like the very tip of the pen or if you're kind of brushing it to the side, kind of like a, um, a brush tip marker. So I'm gonna shake these up for like 10 seconds. So a great tip for drawing your lines is to not look at the absolute tip of your marker, but look at where you want your line to eventually wind up. It's a trick I actually learned just earlier this year, amazingly, <laughs> that really helps keep things clean. It works really well if you're use, using like a straight, some sort of straight line that you want to be perfect. All right, so right here I have, it's just a scrap piece of watercolor paper. Really, you could use anything. I like to use cheap watercolor paper as my scrap because this is paint. You don't want the, the paper to start like getting too thin and uh, pieces of it coming off and getting stuck to the getting stuck to the paint pen. And so what I do every time, seriously, almost every time I like put the pen down on a surface is I test it for a second. And this is great to see what the viscosity of the ink is right now, if I need to shake it up more, if I need to uh, pump the tip a little bit more. If you pump the tip one or two times, it'll bring more tip, uh, more paint down into the felt. And so if you test this, you know, okay, it's going to be fine. I can start using it on the surface. So much like the drawing, I'm going to section everything off by color. So I'll outline all the pink and then I'll go in and fill in the pink with the larger marker. And then I'll follow suit with all the different colors. Let's see. I'm not painting onto the edge of this, but if you want to, that's great. I'm just a little bit worried about sticking my hand into wet paint. And if you leave an edge without paint, you have somewhere to rest your hand to make sure it's nice and these nice smooth lines. All right, that area is pink. Let's see what else is gonna be pink. So here we have quadrant line. So it's gonna cut off right there. You can finish outlining the section like that. See the colored pencil covers up really, really well with the Posca pens. So it's one of the best things that you could possibly sketch with, at least on like a hard material before, uh, before going in with the paint pens. Yes, even though these are acrylic, they will be permanent. Um, sometimes acrylic uh, can absorb into certain materials, but this is not a very porous material. It is a little bit, but mostly it just dries on the surface. And so at the end, um, I will be coating this with a matte uh, Mod Podge. See, like this. Mod Podge makes a great <laughs> mini products for sealing things. Uh, they also have like a gloss finish. Um, if you really wanted to use these planters outdoors, they also have um, an outdoor sealer that you have to let prime for a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if it's like eight days, a couple weeks, something like that. So there's really a lot of versatility. Posco has responded well to all the different sealers I've tried before. And yes, Posco works beautifully on canvas very, very well. As long as you shake up the paint beforehand, you really don't need more than one coat with the pen before you get going. And that's been the case with pretty much everything I've tried it on. Um, if you're using a surface that's more of like, I, I don't know, like nylon, a good trick I found is to take like a matte mod, mod Podge or some sort of mattifying sealer and going over that absorbent material first. And that way the Posca will basically treat that material like it's canvas or like it's something that's not so porous and it doesn't get absorbed quite the same way. 
it takes a lot of experimenting to really figure out what works well. I always recommend having some sort of test material before you work on the final product, just to make sure that you don't have to go and buy something that's really expensive if you're like working on like an expensive purse or something that's really uh, sentimental. Um, you just have to kind of mess around and see, see what works. Let's see. Okay, we have this section, pink. If I had a piece that I made with Posca on canvas, I would show it to you. But the only one I've really made so far was a, uh, was a commission. It's on my Instagram a while back, um, which I don't know if y'all saw. I do have my Instagram handle here and my website. But normally I use Posca for something that's, um, for materials that are just more difficult to paint on. Um, like porcelain, it's really hard to find like a good, a good material that responds well. Like you can't use watercolor on porcelain, or at least not in my experience, you can't. So I tend to, when I'm using Poscas, I tend to be a little bit more adventurous just because there's so many more, so many more options. <laughs> All right, I think that's it for the pink. Yeah, I was pretty rough with the outlining here and all over it because it is going to be filled in eventually. Let me show you how we do that. So I'm using the, the PC5M or the 1.8 to 2.5 millimeter pen to fill in the pink. Uh, that's the size I'm going to be using for filling in all of these areas. Going by color has its advantages because by the time you make it to the far side, this will be pretty much dry and you're ready to, to move on with a new color. I always have a fan on whenever I'm working with these just to like help speed up the drying. But I do find that they just generally dry well and quickly in general. Let's see. And you can clean up the lines as you go. Once again, this is mostly about having fun. This is the pink, this pink rose uh, color. I don't know if they're numbered actually, yeah. Number uh, 13. Yes. Yeah, this one's already almost dry. I've only like gotten this far. All right, and then we'll color in this section. So if I don't have time to, uh, to finish filling in all these colors, I will show you how to gloss your planter with uh, the matte Mod Podge on my original example piece. Oh, that's a good question. Thank you, Cassie. Uh, normally I'm expired, and normally I'm inspired, not expired, <laughs> by um, retro designs, particularly like 1960s, 1970s um, textiles, um, just the art from the time. Um, I get a lot of inspiration from vintage wallpaper. A lot of people think it's really gaudy, but I think it's really fun and it's interesting to incorporate the different elements and the different um, the different motifs into my work. It's like this is inspired by lava lamps. Lava lamps, like they're still around, but it is more of like a retro motif for sure. And then the colors are mostly inspired by whatever makes me feel happy, honestly. <laughs> it's, I just like everything to be as colorful as possible. All right. 
right. Just making sure that's all the pink. All right, great. So I'm going to move on with blue. Now I am smearing the colored pencil a little bit. It's totally fine if yours is doing that. The Posca will cover it adequately, I promise. If you're using graphite, you might have to do a couple layers just because graphite is very opaque and it's made to smear. Like if I use the same pencil that I used to sketch with on here, which I tried yesterday, um, you can cover it eventually. It's just like, why waste your paint if you don't have to? If you can just cover a colored pencil sketch with one coat. And I don't know, I feel like, I feel like colored pencils are pretty common household objects. Especially if you already have Poscas, you probably have a couple colored pencils at least. And the same concept applies to other materials that you can work, uh, work with Posca on. Like for instance, whenever I paint leather purses or vegan leather, it's very similar consistency or very uh, similar like texture. Um, I'll often use a white gel pen or sometimes even just like white acrylic paint to sketch with. Um, because white's definitely the preferred color. It's the easiest to cover up, but clearly couldn't use white on, on a white planter. <laughs> All right. Oops. I totally forgot I was going to line first. It's fine if you do just want to go in with the larger sizes. Um, it really depends on how clean you want the exterior lines to be. I just wasn't thinking about what I was doing. Um, it does totally work to just use the larger uh, bullet-shaped pen. Here we go. Oh, I don't know who Peter Max is, but I'm going to take that as a compliment and look that person up later. So thank you. <laughs> Here we go. And this section also going to be blue. Just for if anyone else has tuned in recently, this is what we are creating. I made this a couple days ago. And I have a sketch here, just mapping out the colors. So this section is blue. There we go. It's very strange drawing without music on. I always, always, always have music. Normally, the playlist or album changes depending on what exactly I'm drawing. So just having just having uh, seemingly myself to talk to, it's a very different, uh, very different experience. I'm gonna shake this up just a little bit more. So a good way to tell your pen needs to be shaken up a little bit more is if after you drew with it if there's some cracking that means it was probably a little bit too thick um and if you just like shook it up a little bit more it could dry more evenly because it'll just make the paint a little bit thinner There we go. All right. Got the blue sections down. I can go in with the larger marker. And this is the light blue PC5M Posca marker. Um, it's 1.8 to 2.5 millimeters. Once again, that size difference is really just about whether or not you're drawing with the very point or if you're drawing kind of like 
to the side, like it's a brush pen almost. There we go. I'm gonna touch up the area over here real quick. Awesome. I found that, at least on porcelain, um, most materials that I can think of, it really doesn't matter if you're shading in a bunch of different directions. Um, as long as it's an even coat, it will dry just very cleanly. It's not like um, some materials you might use, like color pencil, crayon, marker, where you can really tell if you like shifted directions. The way that Posca dries, it's kind of like uh, painting with a, uh, like acrylic paint and a paintbrush where it'll just ultimately kind of blend back together and look like a solid little, a solid little shape. Because here I definitely was going in a bunch of different directions, but it looks, it looks completely solid. There's not really like any line showing through. Which is great because if you have to come at it from different angles, you do sometimes need to change the direction, especially with like organic shapes like this. It's hard to go all in one one direction with your lines. <laughs> there we go. I'll go here. And then we have this section left. And I think that's it for the blue. Yes, and if it's not, we'll figure it out later and it'll be fine. <laughs> there we go. something interesting. So you, I will be co covering up a few of these lines with other colors as I go in. Like, for instance, this is going to be green later. Um, any areas that I cover with green after I've already painted with blue, they'll still be pretty like opaquely, uh, pretty opaquely green. You're not going to have a lot of like uh, color showing through, at least not if once again, your paint has been shaken up well enough. So that's pretty awesome. You don't have to make a million coats <laughs> just so something underneath will uh, stop showing through. If you are having a problem with the color though, um, I would recommend going over with a white Posca, letting that dry and then going in with your next color. That That's worked well for me. Um, you can also just use like normal white acrylic paint uh, because fun fact, the way that white acrylic paint is made makes it the most opaque color you can possibly use. If you mix it in with other acrylic paint colors, it'll make them, uh, it'll add their coverage level. That is one of the most helpful tips that I learned <laughs> in my art class. <laughs> and something similar, like, similarly applies with Posca. There we go. All right, I guess I'll go green. I'm just kind of working my way across these colors and then adding them across, across the planter. I'm really curious to see uh, with the projects of someone 
who doesn't have one of these planters uh, would look like. They're translating this like same concept to a different shaped planter or not even a planter, it could be, uh, it could be a canvas or a piece of wood or anything like that. Okay, so before I come in at the screen, it reminded me of all the screen I have on this other planter. When I was testing out designs, um, this is one of the ones I made, also completely with Posca. It's a bunch of moths, insect looking things. I decided against doing this one for the demo just because I get very detail oriented and it would be a little bit too complex for the amount of time that we have today. This is a very simple piece of art compared to what I normal make, normally make. However, I think it's a very good, very good entry level piece for Posca because you're really getting familiar with how the different, uh, how the different paint works, how the different uh, line sizes work depending on what tip you're using, uh, the coverage level, and I find that it translates very easily. Okay, so we're just going to outline all the green sections that we have mapped out in our sketch. And then just like the other colors, we will fill in with the larger paint pens. Okay, we have this green. And then this section here. You can see it, yeah, it'll all be green. Mm, my favorite surface that I've ever used Posca on would definitely be uh, leather purses. Nothing has responded to leather quite as well as Posca. And just generally, I like to paint accessories. <laughs> I find them the most fun because you get to use them in everyday life if you're brave <laughs> and you're not afraid of messing it up. But I mean, as long as you seal your artwork, you shouldn't have to worry about your beautiful art getting messed up, even if it's on something like a purse. I wouldn't leave it outside in the sun or the rain just because why would you do that? <laughs> However, depending on the sealer, it might still be okay. Earlier, I mentioned how I'm going to be using a matte Mod Podge to coat this. There's a huge variety of sealers on the market. It's really up to what you want to use. I personally am just very familiar uh, with Mod Podge. And I also mentioned when someone asked about if these could be outdoor planters, uh, I mentioned that they do make an outdoor sealer. And I know that other brands also do. Um, really, you just have to do your research. I know that the, the outdoor sealer by Mod Podge will not mess up this paint, will not mess up Posca's in any way. I cannot say that confidently about other brands because I have not tried them. Um, I know that, what is it, Ceram Coat, I think, uh, tends to work really well. I haven't had any problems with that either. But I'll explain the whole glossing varnishing process at the end with this piece most likely. I don't think that I'm going to get all of this filled in in time to show you how to gloss this one. All right, I think that is all the light green. So again, this is the light, this isn't, this isn't Japanese, but <laughs> this is the light green. Um, and I'm using the bullet point once again. There we go. Yes, PC5M. And you could fill this in with a thinner tipped pen if you wanted to. It'll just take you a longer amount of time. Um, like I said, as long as you're like doing an even coat, Keeping your pen up well enough. <laughs> it will ultimately dry 
solidly and it won't show a bunch of streakiness. So even if you used a thinner pen, in terms of streakiness, you will be fine. It just will take you a lot longer to do. And it's just better to save your thinner tipped uh, pen ink for whenever you're working on a thinner tipped project. Alrighty. Green, matching up, starting to come together. All right, we have this section as green. This is what it looks like completely dried. It's a very pretty fluorescent sort of green without being like too neon, I would say. It's like you don't really love neon colors, but you like you like brighter colors. <laughs> um, this is perfect. <laughs> it doesn't look like a highlighter, but it's definitely eye-catching, very summery, very spring. It's a great, one of my favorite colors to work with. There we go. So you do have the option at the end. You could outline all these different shapes if you wanted to. I almost outlined my example piece However, I decided I kind of liked the way it messes with your eyes when you look at it. And adding an outline would make it bolder, but it's not quite so, uh, it wouldn't be quite so funky looking, I guess. It would be more graphic. So it's really like, if, if you wanna outline your shapes when you're done, that's great. You could outline them by color, you could outline by the blobs. <laughs> Did anyone think of a better word for that, by the way? <laughs> That's still, that's still the best one that I've come up with so far. All right, I have the light green there. What color should I do next? I guess we'll do yellow, because that's the next one over here. This yellow is very vibrant. But once again, it's not quite like a highlighter. It's just very yellow. It's like a uh, school bus yellow. So this is the, just, all it says is yellow. It's number two, PC3M, 0.9 millimeters. Pick it up for a second. Um, in case you missed my intro about Hoskas, you do wanna make sure that each day you use them, I would say even like every few hours, if like if they've just been sitting there for a few hours, you haven't been using them, you wanna start by shaking them up for about a minute. Um, just to ensure that everything is as uh, mixed up as it should be. And then after that, throughout the day, um, if you want to just like, if they've been sitting there for 15, 30 minutes, you're good with just like a few, uh, a few seconds, 15 seconds. You just test it on the paper, <laughs> see, see how it works. Like, okay, that's, that's thick enough, that's thin enough, you're good to go. I like, I like the squiggle blobs, that, that's really funny. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not a, um, a shape in the, the naturally occurring world. <laughs> Scientists have not given this shape a name yet. <laughs> so it's really whatever you want to call it. All right, that is first outline of yellow. All righty, so next we have this yellow section right here. If your sectioning off doesn't look quite the same, that's fine. Um, if you don't like yellow and you wanna use a different color, that's also great. You can follow my rules of uh, no colors touching if you feel like it. <laughs> if you like the way the colors look whenever, or the same color looks whenever it's touching, also great. But for me personally, I find that setting at least a couple parameters before I make a piece, particularly something more abstracted like this, um, I'm always happier 
with the end result. It seems to be just generally more cohesive when you set some parameters first. Yellow is so light and I messed up this little green section earlier. Probably we'll have to go over this twice. Yellow is the only one I find that I really have to do any recoding with if there's a color underneath. Um, if I had my white pen primed and ready, I would probably do that first, but that's fine. If I wanted to, I could just make that green. I think after I finish color coloring these yellow sections, I'm just going to go ahead and show you all how to gloss a finished piece. I'll show you how to gloss this one. It's really simple. All you need is some Mod Podge, whether it's gloss, matte, outdoor, glitter, whatever, and um, a brush pen. That's really all you need to add your Mod Podge varnish. Um, it should work with most cream varnishes, um, like paint-on paint style varnishes. Um, I find that foam brushes work best because you don't have to worry about any stray little hairs coming off and getting into the finished piece. That has happened to me many times <laughs> before I, I realized that a foam brush is the way is the way to go. And then if you want to reuse your foam brush, I just use some plain Castile soap and warm water to wash uh, to wash the varnish out to wash the Mod Podge out. Because if you let it dry, it does behave a lot like glue and you will have a rock solid foam brush or just normal paintbrush if that's what you're using. Um, if you don't have Castile soap, dish soap would probably also be good. You want something that's sort of like grease cutting. Um, I've never tried it with normal hand soap. It would probably also be fine. Mod Podge is very easy to work with. You just want to make sure that you get it out of um, whatever brush you're using before it dries. There we go. Bright school bus yellow. Go all over here. So for storing Poscas, I treat them very similarly to how I treat my other acrylic paints, like my bottled acrylic paints. I store them out of the sunlight and in sort of a cool environment. I mean, it's about the temperature of my apartment, which right now is not super cool <laughs> because Texas, <laughs> but it is as good as it possibly can be. Um, I store them flat in sort of like a uh, foldable, marker holder, pencil pencil case holder, um, where they're just divided by uh, color. Um, you probably could also store them like in a little cup, like standing up straight. You might have to, to shake them up a little bit more when you mix them up. Um, so yeah, as long as it's not like sitting in a window or uh, like stored in like an outdoor shed, is something, something where they'd be exposed to like a lot of heat you should be fine, um, or I guess cold. They'll probably freeze because they are water-based or at least partially freeze. I just treat them like a normal, uh, normal water-based paint supply. There we go. All right, after I finish up this yellow, I'm going to demonstrate how to apply your varnish to a finished piece. It really can work with pretty much any piece, whether it's on ceramic or vinyl. Um, yeah, pretty much, pretty much any finished piece. So if you have any more questions, this would be a good time to ask them. So probably be here for about five more minutes. There we go. We got the yellow done. We made it pretty far. We just have orange and emerald green left. I'm a little sad I didn't get to the emerald green. That's my that's my favorite Posca color. <laughs> it's so beautiful. 
it's like it's a little dark on the camera but it's like a dark turquoisey color all right i'm gonna set this off to the side so it can dry so okay tip number one for applying your varnish whatever material it is you can use your hand or clean foam brush tissue something that's clean so probably not your hand at this point and make sure you get all the dirt and dust off of there is something that I've learned in my years of painting is everything uh, that can possibly get stuck to your art will and also learned exactly how much dust is constantly around all of this this has been sitting on my desk for like two days and it has an impressive amount of little hairs and dust stuck to it and you might not notice them just glancing but when you apply your gloss you will see every single little hair that's on there that you didn't brush off so the more careful the job you do the better for sure okay i think i got this adequately brushed off as well as i possibly can now this is a clean foam brush. I've never used it before, aside from brushing this planter off just now. Um, dirt, uh, the little hairs don't really stick to this foam very well, I found, so you should be good. Um, I just dip my brush into the Mod Podge. You could like ladle some out into a little cup. I don't really care to do that because why get like I said, it dries like glue, and then you'll have like glue dried in your little cup, and then you have to throw it away. You can't use it for anything. So if I just dip it in here, or you can pour it into the cap. And you can just get a small amount to start off with. So you'll be very impressed with how far this will go. What I do first is I brush downwards. And spread it out all across first and so it's not going to be picked up in the camera but the finish of this porcelain uh however they like i don't i'm not sure if it's a glaze that was put on it or um just the way that the porcelain dried it's all going in this direction so what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply everything first with a downward stroke just to make sure that there's even application and then once that's finished, I'm gonna brush everything to go in the same direction as the finish that's already there. So this is covering about every little spot. All right, I didn't put any more Mod Podge onto this brush. It's just what was left from my initial dip. So you can hold it in your hand like this. You don't have to worry about getting anything on you. And then just start brushing evenly across to spread it all out. So this will take a couple of minutes to dry. Um, it'll be a couple of minutes to dry where like it actually feels wet, but it will be a little bit tacky. So when you want it to dry, you don't want to set it in the sun for one because that'll that'll extend the amount of time it needs to dry the heating the heating up will. Um, put it in like a cool dark area where nothing or as little as possible, uh, as few things as possible stand the chance of blowing onto it. Because like I said, you will wind up with a million little hairs, especially if you have any sorts of pets. <laughs> you definitely want to let this dry in a room that they're not going to be spending a lot of time in. So this is my finished a piece that I finished a couple days ago that I'm applying this gloss to. I was just painting this with the Poscas. I just applied the yellow to it. I would probably let this sit for at least 20 minutes before I applied the Mod Podge to it. Posca doesn't technically take that long to dry. Like I can touch this, I just put it on here. But just to be safe, I would let it dry a minimum of 20 minutes before I applied the Mod Podge. All right, so because this is the mat, it will dry to where it looks almost exactly 
the same finish as the normal Posca finish. If you wanted a glossier finish, you can get a gloss sealant and it'll work the exact same way that this just did. Um, once again, cleaning technique for your foam brush. You can just take some soap, dishwasher soap, Castile soap, hand soap, and warm water, and you just basically massage the Mod Podge out, and it'll get really foaming, and you'll know, like, you'll be able to feel that, like, the bristles don't have the Mod Podge in there anymore. And it's best to do that before the Mod Podge has a chance to dry, because otherwise it will be rock solid, and you will not have any, uh, you will not be able to get it out anymore. All right, so this is the finished, the finished piece, and this is the one that we worked on together today. All right, and so if you want to find these awesome hexagonal planters, um, there should be a link that will take you to the product description of everything that I use today, the pens, the color pencils, sketchbook, everything, even the foam brushes, and you'll be able to buy that through Plick. And if you have any questions about the colors, um, you could probably DM the Blick team. You could find me. I'm on Instagram as Rosie Moon Creations. I'd be more than happy to give you any information that you need about this. I have a decent amount of experience with Posca, so I can, I can answer any of your questions. So. That's it. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining the live stream today and finding out how to paint your planters. I hope that you all had a great time. And I'll see you all next time.